Welcome to this week's video. It's a Q&A vid. I put out the request for questions on my Instagram story and put up that little question sticker. Boy, did you guys respond. So many interesting questions, so varied. So I'm gonna to try to touch upon as many as I possibly can, doing it in a more relaxed and casual atmosphere here in my backyard. I don't know, I feel chill. I've got my favorite drink, my jam, my coconut buy. So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to hang out with you, to talk, to purge and share whatever it is that you are inquiring about. So let's let's get to it. There are lots and lots and lots of questions. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the top. What is your favorite book genre? Any recommendations? Historical fiction is my favorite. I tend to gravitate toward books on faith, wellness, health, living your best life. Uh, the Biology of Belief is my most recent read, fascinating book. Uh, I just like books that offer more awareness into, I don't know, living a great life, feeling great, thinking big thoughts, um, being in a positive place which I generally am, but these are all basically serving as reinforcements. So those are my, I would say, typical reads, if that makes sense. Uh, that also leads into another question, and really a big grouping of questions are about this. How do you always stay so positive? It's inspiring, what's your secret? I would say by nature, I've always been a positive person. I tend to see the glass as half full. That's just how I'm wired. Not to say that life is positive all the time. This video is airing on a Friday instead of a Thursday. And it's just been, you know, there are times when we are a little overwhelmed, our plates are so full, the cup runneth over, and it's hard to really carve out time for yourself to feel like you're getting everything done while breathing and being in the moment. So I think in times like this, it's important just to step back and to find the good in every situation, to find the blessing in the existence and in your life, to give gratitude for that, even if it's, you know, maybe a little, little speck, it's still worth giving gratitude, elevating, highlighting, and, and whatever we focus on and whatever we put our emphasis on is what grows, is what fuels us. If we put emphasis on the negative, what's bringing us down, our areas of frustration, these are the thoughts that are going to dominate our lives. Whereas if you put it on what's good, then that's what dominates your life. So it's really a mindset and a mind shift. And even in my most frazzled moments when I feel really strung out, I will come to a place like this in my yard, just sort of sit here and breathe, take some deep breaths, do some meditation, little meditation podcasts on the phone, um, whatever it takes to center yourself. But positivity to me is key and I couldn't imagine living life without it. Hey, Oscar, come here, come on, join the party. There we go. See, now it's a real Q&A. What do you think? How do you stay so positive and so kissy? <laughs> I love this dog. Okay, you always seem to have nice and cute nails. I mean, that's a lot of work. Yes, it's a lot of work. You know, I'm at the nail salon every two weeks. It's, to me, a part of being professional. Um, I, I, really? I just, I like having nice polished hands and, and nice nail colors. And so it's a part of my relaxation as well. Talk about, you know, kind of getting in your head and being centered and see ya. Um, and, and just feeling good. So to me, that every two weeks at the nail salon is something I enjoy. I love my salon and my ladies, they're wonderful. And I enjoy picking out new colors, things that go with the season and what I'm wearing. And so yes, it is high maintenance, but it's a part of my self care that I value greatly. How do you deal with stress at work or in your private life? Stress is gonna come at you all the time in every area of your life. And it's important to find ways to de-stress and decompress. And, and we're all individual and those ways are as unique as we are. So for me, exercise is very important to move, to be physical. I've really started um, 
picking up and taking an interest in my yoga practice, doing vinyasa flow yoga. And it is a great workout for me. I sweat. I have that hour of quiet to myself. And I can't tell you what it does for me as a human being just to center myself and to feel really, really good. Quiet time alone is really important. Quiet time to get away, to read. You know, anything that you have to do to feel better so that you can plug yourself back in. We can't escape stress. We can't just say, oh, no, 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 not for me. I'm out. We have to be in it, but we have to learn how to function well. So it's important to fill up your tank, do what you have to do to feel good so you're kind of armed for the battle and you're ready to get in there and fight it, deal with it, whether it's problems with kids, problems with a spouse, problems with coworkers or a boss. We have to deal, we have to resolve conflict. That's a part of who we are and how we're made. But in order to do it well, you've got to be fighting with full armor. And so self-care to me is a big part of getting that full armor. Uh, would you ever do a facelift? <laughs> I'm not there yet, but my feeling is I would never say never. You know, cosmetic work is such a personal choice and experience that I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to age in that area. If, you know, if things just really take a turn south and, and bother me, I will, I will examine options. But what I, what I do like about the cosmetic industry and where it's gone is that once upon a time you would do face cream and then you would go right to a facelift but now there are so many steps that you can take that are in between steps that gradually and slowly sort of get you there so you don't have to go as extreme and as far as you once did not to say it's not an option but there's now a through g before you get to h you know what i'm saying um Next question, what's your favorite anti-aging tool you use at home? I would have to say it's that combination of glycolic acid and Retin-A that I do for my skincare routine. I really feel it's helped my skin, helped the texture, fine lines, um, sunspots, all of those things. It's the best at home care through my dermatologist that I've had. I've been doing it for years now and I really, really see results in my skin. I, I see uh, fewer lines around my eye area. It just overall, the skin tone and condition is so much better than it was when I was in my early to mid forties. So that's just awesome. Uh, have you ever been to Germany or will you go there? Good question. I'm half German. My father was born and raised in Hamburg, Germany, and I have never been. It is definitely on my list just to go and understand and appreciate that part of my heritage. Um, it, it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but if I have any German viewers, I'm sure I can reach out to you and you can show me, show me the way through my half of my homeland, especially in the Hamburg area. So yes, it's on my list. It just hasn't happened yet. What is the biggest challenge you've encountered in your blended family? Um, challenge. I don't know if it's a challenge. I would say awareness that each child is different and their needs are going to be different. And so it's not a one size fits all approach. I think that you have to read the situation, read the children and offer them what it is that you feel they need and want from you. And it can vary greatly. I think the biggest rule of thumb is you're not their parent. So I never present myself as their parent, but as a co-parent in the house, as the wife of their father, there are boundaries, there's rule, there's structure, and those things are very, very important in a household. It's very important to set that up early so that children know what's expected of them, that, that as a team and as a family, this is how we're living together, this is how we're going to coexist, because it's important that everybody functions happily in that situation. But I think it's really important to just be aware and to read every child. Oh, speaking of children, look who just showed up. Come say hi. Um, yeah. Um, yes, right there. Uh -huh, yeah, hello. Um, but so I just answered, what's the biggest challenge you've encountered in a blended family? What would you say that is since you're the child, one of the children in a blended family? That is a difficult question. It is a tough question. Um, I don't really know, just knowing how they, like, knowing their personality. Like when you first meet them, it's like, uh, what are they like? How are they? Like, what do they do? Mm -hmm. They make fun of, I don't know. It's just 
like you have to get to know them first. Right. And it's like kind of a challenge to get to know like family you've never really known. Right. Ever. That makes sense. And so what would you say your approach is or was to just sort of take back and sit, step back a little bit and take note or what? Um, get to know who they are, do what they like to do. Mm-hmm. So. Right. And how would you say you blended with everybody here? What was that process like for you? Oh, I had to get made fun of a lot. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> We're keeping it real on this channel. So did that traumatize you? Mm -mm. Okay, good. Now I make fun of my friends the same way they did to me. See, so it just gets passed on. Mm -hmm. mm, that's great. I would say your relationship with the other kids is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Y'all are really close. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing I like is that you you call them brother, my brother, my sister. Uh, it's not step. So I think you guys have blended remarkably well. At this point, my friends correct me if I say brother, <laughs> step brother. And you say brother. brother. Right. Exactly. I think we're done with the blended family talk. Okay. You need anything from me? Um, uh, <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks for participating. I called you twice. Love you. I know. I'm, I'm busy shooting. That's why I didn't answer. Happens. Okay. Next question. Uh -huh. Why blonde hair? Like the deep brown better. Because you copied me. Because I copied my son. I wanted to look like my son. That, that no. Um, why the blonde hair? I don't know. You know, I have been, I have been every color under the sun with my hair. I've even shown pictures in the past of all the different hairstyles. I just enjoy change. I was feeling it for the summer. But let me share something interesting. So as long as you've known me on this channel, I've always been a brown, reddish brown um, on the darker shade of the spectrum. But what's funny is I'm not naturally that dark. And I've really noticed it now having gone blonde my natural hair color is a light to a medium ash brown. I have zero red in my hair whatsoever. But I'm finding as I get older, my hair is getting lighter and lighter. So ironically, and they even had to paint in some root just to give me a little bit of depth, which was shocking. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I changed because I wanted to change. I'm not nearly as dark as I was. So what does that mean for the future? I have no earthly idea. Do I ever know? No, I wake up one day and it's a whim and I change. That's just, that's how I roll. Are you using different hair products now that you're blonde with extensions? Yeah, there are some products that help with blending your own hair with the extensions. They're spray-in products, and if you have extensions, usually your salon will guide you to those products for blowout, also for heat resistance. Um, I'm using more sort of leave-in conditioners and treatments because uh, blonde hair and super highlighted hair can be really dry, and when you have naturally dry curly hair on top of it, really dry. So I'm doing my best to hydrate and moisturize. So it means just a lot of heavy conditioning in the shower and a lot of leave-in conditioners before I blow dry. So those are the changes. How old are you? And the next question is, how young are you? I am almost 52 years young. I turned 52 June 11th. So happy early birthday to me. Um, what feeds your spirit? Being creative and passionate about something feeds my spirit. I thoroughly enjoy this YouTube channel because it is such a great creative outlet for me. Doing things that I love photography, I love gardening. These are the things that feed me, they feed my soul in really, really deep crevices of mine that, that need attention. So I think that we all have our creative outlets and our, our talents and I think it's very very important to cultivate those. Okay so the next question or series of questions involves working out. What is your workout routine? What kind of workout gives you the best results? And how many days a week do you work out? I would say you know, to vary it up. Your, your body gets awfully used to something that you do habitually. So like I mentioned, I've started doing the vinyasa flow yoga. It's very new for my body and it seems to be responding really, really well because doing it in the hot room makes me sweat. So my heart's pumping. I feel like I'm, I'm getting a good cardio workout. I'm doing body weight strength training and a lot of core training. So that's excellent. I mean, you can do your own set of abs on the side if you really want to work on your ab structure, but 
but let me share this with you and I learned this a long time ago that diet is 90% of how you're going to look you can work out like an animal and do crazy things in the gym but if your diet isn't lean and spot on you will never ever see the six or the eight pack that's going on underneath there so being a lean mean burning machine is everything once you master that you will really start to see the results of all of that good exercise my husband's style my husband has amazing style he's he's the king of the vest so he loves to wear a vest with a button-down shirt cufflinks he likes kind of skinny jeans and designer tennis shoes so his style is very very youthful he can pull it off because he's a young looking guy and he's really lean so i love his style and i love how guys are always complimenting him on how he's put together which is really cute of all the places you've been able to visit what has been your favorite um, gosh, there are so many places I want to go, but uh, out of where I've been, I love France and Italy. I love the coastal towns. I love water. I like the combination of that fabulous Mediterranean water and the hillside. It's just, it's a beautiful place. The culture is beautiful. So I would say out of everywhere I've been so far, those two countries have been my favorite. I've also been to Greece, by the way, in the Greek islands, and they are exceptionally beautiful as well. But it was, a, it was a younger time in my life. I was a college student on very, very simple means. So I experienced those places at a very basic level. So I'm sure that, um, you know, if I were to go back today, it might be a different experience. But of, of natural beauty, boy, those places are magical. Was there ever a time when self-care was down the drain? How did you turn it around and master self-care? When I anchored the morning news at my station, I had to get up at 2.30 in the morning. So I would go to bed at seven o'clock at night and I would put tin foil on my windows so that I could fall asleep. Up at 2.30, anchored the morning show and the noon show, came home. You know, everything was out of whack. My sleep was nuts. I wasn't exercising consistently. I was a carb queen living on muffins and bagels and stuff like that. And one of my dear friends from high school said, you need to get it together and start working out with a trainer and, you know, eating healthy and blah, 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 blah. So it was probably around then in my, in my late 20s that I started to really focus on it make some changes in my life, prioritize. I couldn't get a good night's rest because I was up in the middle of the morning, but at least start prioritizing exercise and making better choices food-wise. And so that was, was something that, that really started to grow, I would say late 20s, early 30s, and just got better over time as I learned more, studied more, and practiced more, a, a healthier lifestyle. What is your favorite cheat day food? <laughs> anything <laughs> I don't know I mean a good cheese pizza a good hamburger I get whatever a piece of Italian cream cake I love white cake white wedding food cake hands down my favorite so I'm gonna go with that does the Retin-A that you use at night impact the color of the brows that are microbladed? Great question. I avoid my eyebrows when I do Retin-A and glycolic acid for that reason, because they can fade the pigment of the microbladed brow. Say that three times, microbladed brow. So be very careful if you're doing any kind of Retin-A glycolic skin lightening treatment and you've had brows done, keep a border around them. Are the hair extensions holding up well? Yes, so this is my first time to have the sewn in extensions. And I don't know, I don't know if you can see them, but they have held up incredibly well. They don't budge, unlike the tape ones that sometimes slide on down. These things are thoroughly intact. You don't see them. My hair can be parted in many, many different ways and I don't see the stitching. So, so far the sew-in um, extensions have been my absolute favorite. Uh, if you're like me, mood is a factor, but what kind of music do you enjoy listening to? I love Brazilian jazz. I love flamenco guitar. I love Diana Krall and Andrea Bocelli. These, that's the type of music that I like to play around the house because mood is really important to me. And being in sort of a calm place and state, I think music can transport you. It can make you feel like you're on vacation. So I like to set that tone in the house by playing the type of music that makes me feel that way. So those are the genres that I love the most. 
What's your guilty pleasure? I really like nice designer purses and shoes, but I do not like paying full retail price. So my guilty pleasure would be the real real and finding beautiful pieces, sometimes new pieces, secondhand for a really good deal. So I'm constantly perusing real real, trade easy, Yugi's closet, um, Poshmark, so much fun. I have scored such great deals there, I can't even begin to tell you. So yes, high-end resale is my guilty pleasure. Were you born with a hard work ethic or and motivation or was it taught? I was sort of born this way. I've always been wired to do work, to be productive, to complete work. I'm not the kind of person who starts something and doesn't finish. Finishing is a real big deal for me. Structure and organization is a real big deal for me. And working and being productive is so important. So I would have to say I'm wired that way, but also through practice and work and feeling good from work, it just, it fuels it, it builds it. It builds your self-esteem and how you feel about yourself, what you're able to produce, therefore care for yourself, being an independent woman. I can't tell you what a great feeling that is. So it just adds fuel to the fire. And yes, maybe, ooh, thunderstorm possibly coming. Yes, maybe I was wired that way, but through practice, it has become a foundation of who I am. What is your favorite tanning product? Boy, you know, I self-tan a lot. I've been using the Saint Tropez line forever. I know a lot of you do, and if you have a self-tanner or tanners that you like and use that you think are just rocking your world, let me know, because I'm always willing to try new things. Is your hair thick or thin? Love your cut, but my hair is so thick. I actually have fine, fine hair, but a lot of it. So it's interesting because my natural hair pattern is wavy curly. It looks so much thicker than it is, which is why these extensions really, really help me when my hair is straight. Because when I blow out this fine hair and I make it straight, it tends to look a little bit on the thin side. So yeah, my hair is surprisingly fine. How do you keep your sex drive humming along? I'm in menopause and struggle. Yeah, it's, you know, it, I'll tell you this, when your hormones are out of whack and you're not sleeping well at night, the last thing you want is a little nookie, <laughs> okay? It's like, I'll give anything for a good night's rest, period, end of story. So mastering that and figuring out how to get hormonal balance and how to get sleep will completely change your attitude on your sex life. And it can then become a priority again when you feel human and you feel like a woman. It's hard. So that's why I say address your menopausal symptoms, take care of yourself, feel well so that you will want to enjoy and appreciate other things in your life that also contribute to your well-being. What keeps you strong in your faith, your prayer, worship, spiritual routine? I would say my my ongoing conversation with God and offering up my prayers and gratitude for things. Um, you know, I check in daily and it makes me feel good. That spiritual connection is very important for me to offer thanks for the things that I have, to pray for my hopes and my dreams, um, or for things that might be sad or need to change or turn around. Um, but that constant communication for me is really, really important. And the more I do it and the more plugged in I am, the better I feel about my life, uh, the better I feel about knowing who's in control, but yet I still have to do my part. So it's really important to me. Advice for an aspiring journalist. Really good question. I, I'm gonna offer this advice and it's for anybody aspiring to be anything. Work ethic is number one. Having a great attitude, being willing to learn, to grow, to show up early, to stay late. On a job interview, not ask, how much vacation time do I get? What my benefits are? And oh, by the way, I'm gonna be gone two months in June because I've got a wedding. I'm sorry, two weeks in June because I have a wedding. You know, it's, employers want to see that spark. They want to see that hunger, that drive, that desire to learn and grow and not an attitude like, I'm here, I'm here, what are you doing for me? They want to see what you're going to do for them. And so whether you are an aspiring journalist, whether you are an aspiring anything, be hungry, be valuable, be a contributor, be a spark, 
be a good colleague and coworker. Um, I can't tell you how much and how far that will serve you in your career. So that goes for anything. Okay, next question. What are your thoughts on bioidentical pellets? Thank you in advance, I'm a devoted follower. Thank you. I, boy, this, this menopausal journey sure is an interesting one. I've been going through it for a couple of years now. I have, I started with bioidentical hormones. I've done creams, I've done sublingual tablets, combination of estrogens and progesterone. Uh, for me, it's been a saving grace. Uh, I recently switched over to an estrogen patch, low dose, with progesterone at night. Um, I will tell you this, it's a journey, and it's one that is evolutionary. Things never stay the same, the body never stays the same. I think that there is no point suffering through menopause. There are remedies in both the hormonal side as well as supplement side and even in combination that can help alleviate symptoms and make you feel better. But it is truly a personal journey. It's one that you've got to walk through. It may take several medical practitioners to finally get you where you need to be. But all I will say to you is this, do not suffer. It's not worth suffering. Make the best decision based on your health, your health history, and what is gonna work for you. But um, I, I have definitely been supplementing with hormones for years now. Uh, what is your real height? <laughs> well, good question, because the internet has me at six feet, and I am not six feet tall. I'm five foot eight, so I'm tall, but I'm not that tall. So I'm very happy to clarify that. Um, your thoughts on wearing pantyhose. You know, pantyhose went out of style a long time ago and Spanx came in style, especially if you need compression around the waist or thigh area, but everything is bare leg. You, you never see women wearing pantyhose. The only time you see um, anything covering the leg is winter time with tights and stockings. Don't know why the trend changed, um, but it has. And so I don't wear pantyhose and especially living here in Houston when it's, you know, today like 94 degrees outside, you don't want to wear pantyhose. So, you know, that's just the way it is. But um, I'd say it's a personal choice. How long will it take to grow out bangs? You know, I find bangs to be so incredibly versatile. I mean, it depends on how fast your hair grows, honestly. But I can wear them down, as you can see, or I can take them and, and flip them over to the side. And with just a little bit of hairspray and product, make it seem like I have completely gotten rid of my bangs. And I've actually worn my hair back on air um, in a ponytail. And again, like I said, with product, they just sort of, they just go back. So I think bangs are great because in my opinion, you can have the best of both worlds. But the grow out phase really depends on your hair. I mean, and, and also what do you consider grown out? Some people like a longer bang down to here. I mean, that could take, that's what, about three inches? So that could take about six months. Really depends on what your goals are. Do you have a special diet? Um, I eat healthy. I eat lots of produce, lean protein, and, and healthy fats. Um, avocados, nuts, coconut oil, things like that. I've actually done a video of what I eat in a day. I can provide a link to that if you haven't seen that video, but it really gives you an overview as to what my meal plan looks like. But just lots and lots of healthy food, lots of water, and of course, lots of coconut bite. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of magnetic eyelashes do you like? Um, I've, I've purchased the Ardell met, um, lashes, the magnet lashes, and they work really, really well. I haven't tried the magnetic eyeliner with the lash, but that's next. As you know, I do lash extensions, but I do a more natural looking lash extension. I do the individual lashes instead of the volume. So it's more natural on a weekend type look, but when I get really made up for work and I put my war paint on, sometimes I need a really bold lash and I'll just clip on a magnetic lash on top of that. And it works great because it's not using glue, which won't rip out the eyelash extensions. Last couple of questions. How many times do people say you look like your mother? <laughs> It's so funny. It's actually the other way around. People will say to my mother, oh my gosh, you look just like your daughter. It's like, who came first, the chicken or the egg? It's hilarious. But yes, we are told all the time, twinsies, sisters. It's great. She loves it. I love it. She's like my, my 
aging role model. She's amazing. She looks great. She's got such a spark and an attitude about her. So I just, I adore her as you well know. Um, last question. Does your husband like you blonde? Oh my goodness. He is obsessed. He calls me his new girlfriend. Need I say more? <laughs> anyway, Q and A time is done. I can't thank you enough for your great questions. If I didn't answer yours, I'm so sorry. I will try again in another Q and A video. There were so many great questions and I think we could go on for hours here, but thank you. Thank you for contributing and for reaching out. Um, I have a video coming up for you that's gonna be so fun and so different. I'm excited, I'm not saying anything else about it. Anyway, um, I encourage you in your life to ask yourself, some big questions and then answer them and see how you do and see how you feel about your answers to your big questions in life. See if there are opportunities to make any tweaks and changes or to self-reflect or maybe see things differently or do things differently. I think sometimes a Q&A is something that we can do for ourselves. It's a great gift and it can lead to inspiration and change. So go out, be bold, be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday at one o'clock, I promise.